This presentation is to accompany the book, Consumer Behavior, a Primer. One theory of self-concept, the looking glass self, explains that self-concept develops by interpreting other people's reaction to us. We use other people as mirrors or looking glasses. So, for example, if you're attending a dinner and are approached with smiles and complimented on how nice you look, you may interpret that positively and see yourself as attractive and approachable. On the other hand, if you found that people avoided you and increasingly lengthened the distance around you, you might interpret that to mean that people don't like you and are trying hard to avoid you. You're likely to see yourself negatively. According to the looking glass theory, how you interpret how you think others see you affects how you see yourself. It affects your self-concept. Advertisements are, in a way, mirrors of how other people see us. To get an understanding of this, we will take a look at some vintage ads, which by today's standards are racist advertisements. This ad from the 1940s for Shell Gasoline uses the watermelon stereotype that watermelons are one of the foods African Americans like best. The stereotype that African Americans are fond of watermelons goes back at least 200 years. The very politically incorrect term piccaninny is used in this ad. Piccaninny was even a name for a cigar. The candy maker Whitman's marketed piccaninny peppermints for 10 cents. This ad for bleaching cream is from Ebony Magazine, April 1960. The bleaching cream changes your skin to look lighter. In this ad for cream of wheat from the 1915-1920s era, the little boy has a whip in his hand and he is saying, Giddy up, uncle. Children were not allowed to call adult African Americans Mr. or Mrs. Uncle was a term of affection. African Americans were depicted in subservient roles. This is a 1922 ad for Jell-O. This ad for Heinz cream is from 1907. This is a 1938 magazine advertisement. Once again, we see that African Americans are in a subservient role. An 1890 ad for rat poison reads, Rat and Chinese must go. The package shows a Chinese man eating a rat. The 1882 Chinese Exclusion Act forbade the immigration of Chinese to America. Eating rice degraded the standard of living. This is a pamphlet by Samuel Gompers, the leader of the formation of unions in the United States. It's in the Library of Congress. The point is, people who eat different foods are different from us. In this case, it illustrates the antipathy towards Chinese. According to this 1967 Rice Council ad, you don't get fat eating rice. The character included in this 1953 ad for Chung King is not politically correct by today's standards. This is a 1981 ad for the Bic Roller Pen. It appeared in the Vegetarian Times magazine. In contrast to the vintage advertisements that we just saw, today's ads take care not to offend. For example, ethnic harmony is the theme of the advertising campaign of Bennington, the clothing store. These ads celebrate ethnic diversity, racial harmony, and representational equality. It is somewhat of a surprise when we see blunders by well-known companies. Abercrombie & Fitch, a popular clothier for teens and young adults, offered racist t-shirts. These t-shirts were met with howls and protest. There was a fallout of bad publicity. The t-shirts were taken off the market. During the 2008 Olympics held in Beijing, China, 
Spain's Olympic basketball team posed for an ad for a Spanish courier company prior to the games. It appears to show all its players slanting their eyes, a depiction that some found offensive. Do these politically incorrect and racist ads really have an effect on self-concept? Research seems to suggest that it does have an effect. For example, in one study, one group of African-American college students were asked 20 questions from the GRE, a graduate school entrance exam. Another group of comparable African-American college students were asked the same 20 questions, but this time, prior to answering the questions, they filled out demographic information, including identifying their ethnicity. This simple act led to a score that was half that of the group who did not identify their ethnicity. Identifying their ethnicity activated the negative stereotype associated with African Americans and academic achievement. Follow-up questions revealed that the participants did not believe that the previous identification of their ethnicity had an impact on their performance. Another study found that Asian women perform better on math tests if they think of themselves as Asians rather than as women. The superior performance of the group who think of themselves as Asians may likely be due to the activation of the stereotype that Asians are good in math. The poorer performance of the group who think of themselves as women may be due to the activation of the stereotype that women are not good in math. The results of these studies suggest that stereotypes do have an effect on self-concept. We are affected by how we think others see us.